You can literally overcome anything if you decide to. Let's get into it. Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Recently, I read a story in Sports Illustrated on a gentleman by the name of Larry Miller. Now, for you who don't know, Larry Miller is the former president of the Portland Trail Blazers. He is a current executive with Nike. Now, what made this story so interesting and, and why I'm mentioning it? Because uh, although many have not committed the crime Larry Miller committed, we all have skeletons and some are burdened and uh, destroyed by their skeletons and some prevail and fight through it and overcome the skeletons. Now, Larry Miller uh, at the age of 16 was in a gang, was, was uh, pretty reckless and over time, uh, he became even more reckless. But at some point, he had a friend who was a gang member also uh, get murdered. Larry was angry, upset over his friend's death, and he swore to get revenge. He did get revenge. However, he got revenge on a young man who had nothing to do with his friend's murder. He got high, he got drunk, and killed the first young man he saw. Now, Larry was caught, tried, and convicted of the murder, and he served uh, time in the penitentiary until he was about 30 years old. When he exited the penitentiary, he had a new lease on life, but there was one problem now. He had a criminal record. And so when the application would ask, do you have any criminal history? Are you a felon? He would tell the truth. And he noticed he would never get the job. So he decided to not tell the truth about his criminal history so he could make a living and get hired on somewhere. And that's what happened. He stopped telling the truth. He eventually got hired on and uh, was able to make a living for himself. He, he actually uh, went to college, got a degree, and uh, did well for, for himself. Uh, worked his way up, uh, got hired by Nike, uh, then moved over to the Portland Trail Blazers, uh, then came back to Nike, and uh, he's done quite well for himself, rubbing shoulders with, with the uh, high-end, high-caliber celebrities, you know, uh, from Bill Gates to Michael Jordan. Uh, his mentor was David Stern, rest in peace, the former commissioner of the NBA. Uh, so yeah, he, he, he did quite well and is doing quite well for himself. Now, Larry has kept this a secret, this murder a secret uh, for years. And I understand why. Uh, now, he just revealed it in the Sports Illustrated interview. And he says his reason for doing it is because he was tired of carrying the burden. He said for all those years, he was in corporate America and had these, these high ranking positions. He always was stressed and always had anxiety about one day being exposed, about someone coming forward and saying, hey man, this guy killed a brother several years ago. This brother is a murderer. This brother is not who you think he is. He, he was always scared that that would happen. And man, that could be stressful. Man, I can, I can only imagine uh, being under that type of stress, but that could be quite stressful because your livelihood could be taken, as you know it. It, it could be taken just by someone uh, exposing you for a murder, 
although you served your time, uh, maybe you showed contrition. I don't know. But, you know, we know how corporate America works. It's just a bad look for them, right? But uh, he came out. He came out with this uh, with this fact about his, his past. Now, I've seen people go back and forth about why he did it. Uh, now, he is coming out with a book. And some people say he did it to, to, for book sales. You know, that's an easy go-to. Uh, I don't know. I won't, I won't uh, speculate why anyone does what they do uh, because I just don't know. You know, I don't know how anyone uh, or everyone thinks and what their motivations are. But uh, I don't know if the brothers, I don't think the brothers suffer for money. Um, you know, he's an older gentleman now. I don't know if he wants fame. So I'm going to take him at his word that he wanted to release this. He wanted to release this burden. I'm going to take him at his word. Uh, and that's all I, I uh, all I can do is take him at his word. This brother has carried, this brother has carried this burden for all these years. He's been penalizing himself. Right? He's created. He's created a stalker. He's created a villain, an enemy that probably didn't even exist. He created this in his mind. Man, that has to be mental torture. And this brother needs to be saluted for staying focused, for getting back on track, being able to come back for murdering another young man as a young man and not sinking deep into depression or despair. Because a lot of people in that situation would have given up. They would have said, man, my life is over. I committed a murder, I got a felony. My life is over. But that brother didn't do that. He fought back. And that's what it takes, man, fighting back and, and overcoming obstacles. The mental obstacles are the biggest challenges. Overcoming those things, man, uh, can take you far. And if you don't overcome them, they will keep you far behind. Uh, but this brother, I believe, needs to be celebrated. You know, so many uh, of us as adults, we don't like talking about our past, whether uh, it's criminal activity, uh, uh, immortality, shadiness, uh, wickedness. You know, we don't like talking about our dark side. And that is uh, doing a disservice to yourself and to other people, and especially to the youngsters because um, they grow up thinking, man, my, my mom, my dad uh, didn't do anything wrong. And then they finally do something wrong and they think they're a failure. They think that's the end, they can't make it, their life is over. When, in fact, if they had heard your story, if they had heard you talk about your darkness and how you overcame some things, it would have given them hope. But I know parents, a lot of parents don't like to talk to their kids about their past. They want to leave it in the past. But man, these are all lessons. These lessons are to be taught to other people. So maybe they don't have to go through what you went through and they can have it uh, much smoother. You know, that's what I thought it should be all about, making the next generation better. Uh, but you can't do that. If you're keeping that stuff to yourself. Man, you take a Maya Angelou. Now, a lot of us know Maya Angelou as the, uh, I guess you could say the poet, the writer, the actress, the philosopher. Uh, but, you know, Maya Angelou had a past and she talks about it. She talks about being a sex worker at a young age. And, uh, she talked about that to help others. You know, a lot of us see the end result. We see the product or the presentation of the person once it's gone. 
through the rigorous fire, through the rigorous challenges, the ups and downs, the valleys. Uh, we see the finished product, and it's a beautiful product. And uh, my Angela had a beautiful smile, a beautiful spirit. And that probably was always in her. But there was a time in her life where her darkness took precedence over her light. You know, being a sex worker is, is a dark life, man. That's a dark life, a dark spiritual uh, environment. And she was there. Uh, but she talks about it. She talked about it. Rest in peace. And that gives other young girls that are in that situation hope by reading that about my Angelou. You know, it lets them know, hey, I can overcome. I can get out of this situation. I can be great. I'm destined to be great. You got to tell these stories. You know, you take uh, Barack Obama. He wrote in his book, you know, how he had a, a cocaine habit. You know, and some say he did this. He revealed this, 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 uh, this time in his life because he's about to run for president and uh, he didn't want it to come out. And, you know, that may be true. It may not, it may not be true. Um, but if he did, uh, if that's one of the reasons, hey, great. I agree. Tell your own story. I always tell your own story, man. If somebody will tell your story with their own narrative and their own motives and ambitions. So you tell your story. Come on out with it. So I, I agree with that. But I do know that it also probably inspired people and motivated people and encouraged people. So that's a beautiful thing, too. And here this man. Hey, look, man. Uh, father was around, biracial kid, uh, was a drifter. Obama was a drifter for a time in his life. I guess you can call him a sort of a late starter, I guess. Uh, but got on track. Fast forward, he becomes the president of the United States. Beautiful story. Beautiful story, man. That's that's an inspiring story. You know, we take Malcolm X. You know, Malcolm X. Uh, former pimp, I guess, quote gangster. Uh, drug dealer, drug user. Goes to the penitentiary, has a new lease on life as well. Uh, turns his life around, and here we have Malcolm X. I mean, and Malcolm X, man, is a brother that, I guess, uh, reinvented himself a few times. <clears throat> he went from the dark street life to being a devout Muslim or, or, uh, or uh, NOI. And then he went from that of uh, despising and hating the white man to uh, have an experience, having an experience in Mecca and seeing white people, white Muslims, and, and uh, having a, a renewal of mind about white people. So this brother has constantly, uh, or did constantly reinvent himself and, and uh, elevate his thinking. So man, that's those are beautiful stories, beautiful stories. So I want to say this to the to the to the brothers, to the sisters out there, to the parents. Man, tell your truth, tell your story. Do it responsibly. But it's uh it's selfish for you to have so much knowledge and wisdom and to take that to the grave and not share it with anyone. We have the opportunity now to not just share our story uh, in passing with people, with certain people, or we don't even have to be on the pulpit. We don't have to uh, be called to the front of the church to give a testimony or stand up and give a testimony in church. Man, you you got you got this. You got the you got YouTube. You got the internet where you can uh, you can give back these jewels to people. You know. Tell people how you overcame, that they can overcome. But people will be will will get beat down with despair and depression because they made mistakes or they didn't get it all right. Uh, or they had to start over. People will beat themselves down 
and uh, going to deep depression, man. I see it all the time. I, I see it often. And this is why they need to know that like, you, you didn't live a perfect life. You didn't have it all figured out. You made mistakes. You had to start over so that can inspire them and motivate them. Yeah, man, tell your story. Don't keep that Don't keep that stuff to yourself. Tell it. Hey, man, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.